The key takeaway is that when you are using an AXI stream or any AXI interface, you always have to and together the valid and the ready in order for the data sample to actually be valid. Hi, I'm Stacy, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about AXI stream. Axi Stream is the very basic streaming interface, and this is a precursor to the full Axi protocol that I'll be doing in a later video. So the Axi Stream interface is made up of several different kinds of signals. So the obvious easy ones are the data and the valid. That's easy. We're familiar with data and valid signals. I showed them in my previous UART video where you have the data coming in and then the valid is the indicator that says this sample is valid or this sample is not valid. In addition to these two obvious ones, there's also metadata signals. So the metadata signals are the signals that contain metadata about the sample. Maybe it's a destination or an ID or some kind of user value or something like that. And so the metadata signals for the most part in the interface are optional. And then there's two other signals in the interface. There's a ready signal which handles back pressure and handshaking. Say for example, the receiving module is a really slow processor. It's just slow. It doesn't have a very fast clock. It doesn't have a lot of memory. That little module that's receiving all this data needs a way to say, hold on, hold on, just, just pause, just pause for a second. I just, this is too much. I just need you to slow down so that I can process what I have and then I'll be ready for more data. And that's what the ready signal does. The ready signal is from the little receiving module that's trying to receive all this data. Stop giving me data for a moment so that I can just do some stuff and then I'll be happy to receive more. And there's a last signal and the last signal just indicates that this is the last sample in our packet. It's a packet delimiter. It says, okay, this is my last sample. And then the next set of samples is a new packet. And so the last is also relatively simple in that it's like a metadata, but it has a specific meaning. And so this is the documentation that shows the possible three combinations of valid and ready that you can have. You can have valid going high first, which is the master saying, I have valid samples, I want to give them to you. And then the ready is asserted when the slave is ready to receive the samples. When both of those signals are high on the clock cycle, then the data is valid. The second case is when the ready is asserted first, say, so the slave is saying, I'm ready to receive data and the valid is not high and then the master drives the valid high and that is the second case. And then the third case is when they both say ready valid at the same time. And so these are the three cases of combinations of valid and ready. When you're working with these interfaces, it is very, very important that you always and the ready and the valid together. And in my example code, I will show you, I and together the valid and the ready. According to the protocol, both valid and ready need to be high in order for that sample to be properly transmitted and to be considered a valid sample. So now that we've discussed the interface, I'm going to show you what my code looks like. So the URTX was discussed a couple of videos ago. So this is the UART wrapper. That's the new UART wrapper code that I wrote. And basically what it is, it's the FIFO that I generated last video. And then that FIFO interface connects up with the UART transmitter. And the UART transmitter interface has a ready, a valid, and a data. It doesn't have a last because it doesn't use it. And so I have hooked up my FIFO and I basically have input, last, ready, valid, data into the FIFO and then out of the FIFO and out of the FIFO goes straight into my UART transmitter. And then in my test bench, I have a packet counter that is just counting the number of samples that are in the packet. And when it gets to a specific size, then it generates a last. So in this case, it's 10. And after 10 samples, which is packet counter map, then the last is asserted. And for this counter, I'm using the valid and the ready as the conditional for incrementing my counter because of the requirement that it must be valid and ready in order for a sample to be considered properly transmitted or valid. And I use the ready in order to generate the next bit in the linear feedback shift register. I have added to my linear feedback shift register a clock enable. 
and the clock enable allows me to pause it and say okay hold on I don't want you to make me more data just yet and so the clock enable I've included in this if statement so only if this is high is the clock enabled and it produces a new output data sample according to the interface protocol I can't wait on ready in order to be valid in this test bench there will always be valid data for as long as the FIFO is ready and I use the ready for the clock enable for the linear feedback shift register and I have a pack account counting my packets and that is basically it so if I go to my test bench and I look at my test bench output we can see that the samples are valid but the FIFO is not ready to receive them and so then at this point the FIFO is ready to receive samples and then at that point my linear feedback shift register continues to generate data and so both valid and ready need to be high in order for the data transmitted to be considered properly valid and every 10th clock cycle I generate this uh, last bit that's high. This is just producing samples even though the URTX is slower than one clock cycle per sample. In this case, it's just generating samples because the FIFO is not full yet. And so we're just piling samples into the FIFO as fast as we can because the FIFO is just like, fine, I'm, I'm good. And then what happens is when the FIFO gets full, it says, hold on, I'm not ready anymore. I'm full. I can't take any more samples. And so at this point, it deasserts ready. And so my linear feedback shift registered clock enable goes low and it's just like, okay, well, that's fine. I'm just gonna stop making samples for you then. But the valid still remains asserted like, okay, but if you want more samples, there's more samples waiting. You just have to assert ready and you can get more samples. And so at this point, the FIFO is full. Now what happens is if we look at my TX out, we can see how slow the UART is in comparison to our clock rate. So if we run this for a little bit longer, you can see this by you are chugging along data. So now if we zoom in here, it's driven out one uh, word. And so now it has one word space in the FIFO for another sample. And so then it drives the ready high saying, oh cool, I'm ready for one word. Can you give me another word, please? And so the linear few batch shift register gives the FIFO one more word. And then the FIFO is like, oh, I'm full again. Okay. And then it remains full until it's clocked out the next word out of the UART. And then it comes along and says, oh, I can do another sample, please. I just realized there's a bug in this. Oh, I realized there's a bug in this. And it's because this last isn't valid and ready. So if, if it's on last, it's resetting the counter. But it can't just reset the counter on last. It has to reset the counter on last and valid and ready. So let's just fix. There we go. So if I'm resetting my packet counter, I don't just reset it on last, I have to reset it on last and valid and ready. Because if last is asserted, but the packet hasn't been transmitted with the valid and the ready, then it doesn't count. And that last must remain asserted until that sample is transmitted. So let's just rerun the simulation. There we go. So now my last, if we look at this, it got one sample. It said, oh, okay, I'm empty so I can get another sample. And the next sample is a last sample. It has to maintain the data and the valid and the last until the ready is asserted. It's lined up all of those values, but ready is still not being driven yet. So we just carry on simulating there ready is driven. So then it's ready and it said, okay, I'm good. I've received your sample. So at that point, the data the valid and the last are all the right value and it's acknowledged okay I got it thank you you can move on to the next one and so the slave module that's receiving the data is the one that really controls the flow of the data through the interface and the master has to set up the data the set up the data and the valid and the last and everything all the values on the interface need to be set up and maintained until the ready comes along and says oh I'm ready for this. Thank you. I acknowledge that receipt, that data and everything, the data, the metadata, everything. And then the master can go into the next sample and it must maintain that sample. By definition, the slave has to assert ready at some point. And there isn't a time specified of how soon the slave must assert the ready. And I think that this has actually caused issues on the interfaces for like a zinc. You can like lock up the interfaces 
such that they you need to reflash the FPGA. But that's the Axie stream. When it comes to IDs and destination values and user values, that's just metadata. If you don't need it, you don't use it. As a beginner, you don't use it. If specific applications, if you're doing a DMA and the stream needs to land somewhere and you're writing into a module that requires those signals to be driven in some way, then the spec for that module will say, we need you to drive the ID and the destination in this specific way. The reason why I'm going over the stream first is because Big Axie is just five streams in parallel with some rules regarding what stream can be valid when, and they have a little bit of interaction between each other, between the readies and the valids. So there's just a few extra rules regarding the readies and valids and when everything is. But for the most part, if you can get the stream, you can get the big axie. And if you break it down into the little streams and you focus on each little axie stream interface that are kind of packaged up into big scary axie, you will actually find that it's not as bad as it looks. So I'm going to go over it in the future and you'll see axie stream a lot. Even if it's not in this form, it might not say axie stream, but this interface with the valid and the ready and the data is extremely common. So this will be a very, very critical tool in your toolbox for perfecting your FPGA skills over your career as you get started. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate you. I'll put some resources in the description and I will chat again next time. I think my next video is probably going to be like a timing related one. It's going to be uh, timing closure, timing constraints, that kind of thing. If you're interested in it, you'll see that one next time. And I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye! That was decent.